What's up guys, it is JBeeps here, and welcome to this first episode of a brand new series. So if you are familiar with my channel, you've probably seen I've done similar experience with this on Madden. So basically I'm going to be drafting 53 offensive linemen, and then I will have to make those 53 linemen into a full 53 man roster. I've done this with quarterbacks, and I've done this with running backs. And now, I'm just deciding making my way through, I decided I really want to do it with the offensive linemen. So... That being said, let's go ahead and let's start our fantasy draft. Now, first pick is going to be a little bit controversial, but after, after I explain to you why, it'll all make sense. So my first pick is Lane Johnson, and you may be thinking, why in the world am I taking Lane Johnson right away? Well, that's because as far as offensive linemen go, he is the best quarterback as an offensive lineman. That, therefore... Obviously, this team is not going to have a quarterback. So, I'm going to have to go through and make sure that, you know, we actually get someone who can actually, you know, throw the ball more than five yards. The Cardinals are now on the clock. And obviously, just really going to go through, pick players based on development trait. The Cardinals are just because it's, that's going to be so key is to get this team to progress quickly. Like in my quarterback, all quarterback fantasy draft, best thing I ever did was have those players with the higher development rate because we just need those players to develop pretty much as quickly as possible. Because if we are able to do so, then the team can get better. Then just once we start playing better, we can do more things, and the just the entire team starts to get better altogether. So that's why I'm doing that. So obviously this team, offensive league, we're probably going to be a very power-heavy running team, which is why I've decided to use the Vikings offensive playbook. Just because, again, this team is obviously full of a bunch of 300-pound-plus men. So we are going to look to pound the rock a lot. Defensively, looking to go for a... Uh, we're going to go for a 4-3 look, just because... You just want as many players in the box as possible. Because so I think we might have, we'll probably have a pretty decent run defense. It's just the issue is going to be that pass defense. And another plus with this is since I obviously am taking all these, all these linemen, the is that I'm taking these linemen away from other teams. So obviously, with every, with all these experiments of this type, obviously there is going to be those advantages. Like my all quarterback fantasy draft, I was facing 60 overall quarterbacks in the regular season as starters because I took so many quarterbacks. So, I mean, realistically, teams won't be having that good of offensive lines. Definitely won't in the preseason. So, it'll really, just be interesting to see how it all fold, how it all folds out. The Cardinals are now on the clock. So, at least the nice thing is, since there is like five different positions I'm technically picking from. There are a lot of, a very wide variety of players and a lot of players that have good, uh, I guess you'd say good, good development traits. Cause I mean, what was that? That was the 13th round and we just picked up another superstar. So it's just the, the little things like that that don't really seem like much, but are gonna significantly help the team. Now, obviously, giant weakness is uh, team's lack of speed and catching. And that is going to be something we're going to have to find a way to work around. The Cardinals are now on the clock. I don't really know how, how things are actually going to end up working out. But I do know this is going to be quite the, quite the interesting experiment, to say the least. The Another really nice thing about this is overalls don't matter at all you know because I mean all pretty much all these players are going to end up as like clock. some of these players could be lining up at corner so it doesn't matter how good of a blocker they are it's just again first development trait and then we can hit the physicals as far as like speed strength all of that stuff
All right, so I think I think we're now at the Looking point where it's it's just normal players. But we'll, we'll still we'll still see though. Development trait. All right, so yeah, left tackles are at normal. I think Peters is yep, Peters is a star. I think now we're at the point, I think all the stars might be taken. Oh no, we still got a couple of star centers. The Cardinals are now on the clock. I'm really excited for this thing, for this series to play out. The Cardinals are now Just Obviously, with the, with the seeds experiments, literally anything can happen, and you don't really ever know what is actually going to end up happening. Which is why I'm so excited. Alright, so... Development traits pretty much are gone, so now we're going to go for speed. We'll take a couple of quicker centers. Another thing is we do have to kind of like move through the uh, whole whole entire offensive line selections. Like we we haven't taken an actual left tackle yet. All right, let's get some let's look for strength. We'll get three. We'll, no, we'll get we'll get four four strong left tackles. And then we'll probably hit up. I don't know, actually. The Cardinals are now on the clock. I think now we're just at the point where we'll just go through and we'll take five. We'll take a player from each offensive line position, and just really see how it ends up working. All right, yeah. Nate Solder. The Cardinals are now on the clock. Because the biggest issue I've had with these experiments is getting the team to gel right away and figuring out what's going to work. Because I mean, obviously, this is this isn't a regular NFL team. You can't just oh, well, let's put this clock. type of game plan together. It's oh no, we have no ability to pass the ball, but we can run the ball. But we can only run the ball if they line up in this type of defense. But if they li don't line up in that type of defense, then what are we supposed to do? The Gotta take the legend to Will Clap. Alright, so now we're just gonna, we'll get, we'll see what filters there are for the right tackle. We'll go for, we'll go for acceleration. At least the nice thing is with this is we don't really have to worry about, oh, ooh, do I want to go for more of a three, four, you know, what kind of look do I want to go for? It's just yeah, I'll take a, I'll take a couple of faster players. The Cardinals are now on the clock. You know, at this point we're we're not drafting because the skill or or to fit the scheme. We're just drafting because of physical ability. The Cardinals are now on the clock. Okay, so one thing I totally forgot to do was kicker and punter. Because there are players that do want to take a kicker and punter, but I'm pretty sure they're already gone by now. Which is a huge issue. Oh, no, my kick, the kick, person I want for kicker has not been taken yet. So I need to take him now. I totally forgot about this because obviously we don't really have a kicker. So I want Ty Simbralio. Yep, this man. And then my the backup quarterback. I want the... Ooh, I don't know if he's still there. Right tackle. Okay, I think he might still be there. He's not. Ah, uh, I wanted Titus Howard as my other 
The Cardinals are now on the clock. All right, well, hopefully we can still get our punter. I think so. Chuma Edoga, right tackle. I think he was still there. Yep. All right, so you missed out on that backup quarterback that I, I just completely forgot about taking. However, did still get a decent amount of players. Still got our starting kicker, starting punter, starting QB. So now we're going to... We should go for awareness, actually. Like, I think that's actually a smart football decision. Is we'll just go through. We'll get two players with, good, with the highest awareness from each position right now. Because I actually feel like that will really help us on the defensive side of the ball. The Cardinals are now no, I'm saying it's not play wreck, but I think I think there should be a little bit of a correlation between awareness and play wreck. At least I hope so. And if not, it should just help in overall and in general. I hope. Another nice thing is offensive alignment group is so diverse in age as well. Like we don't have to take and we're not taking multiple seventy some overalls. You know, we're take I mean we've, there's been a couple of times we've taken one round we've taken a uh, thirty two year old, next round we've taken a twenty five year old and then a twenty three year old and then back up to thirty one. It's just been kind of nice to see all of that play out. The Cardinals are now on the clock. So now obviously, this is going to be it's going to be tough from my perspective in having to figure out figuring out who's going to play what position. Because obviously, it doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter that much, but I mean, there could be a couple. Like, if a player is really good at uh, outside linebacker, but he's also an amazing tight end, what do I do then? The other thing is, tight end and f fullback are obviously going to be amazing because of their ability to block, but that doesn't correlate to their ability to catch the ball or their ability to run the ball or. Your ability to run routes so it's it's it's, it's going to be a process i'm not going to show that process because it takes me like literally an hour to go through and change all the positions players into the right position change their numbers and get it legitimately takes me around an hour and i don't want to bore you guys I think now we should just go for the the largest men. The Cardinals are now on the court. Just take just find the largest players that we can take. Nice right, six six we'll take Tom Compton. The Cardinals. I mean, the, the, the thing we'll always have an advantage on every single other team is size. And I don't think anybody's gonna be questioning that. And really, if we can just take full advantage of our strength and size, that can really help us. Six foot eight, Brandon Parker. The Cardinals are now on the clock. I think that Parker dude we just took that six eight. He could end up being a he could end up being our slot corner. Like that's how crazy this experiment is actually gonna end up being the Cardinals are now on the clock so I think if yeah, case and still there I'm pretty sure he's one of the faster offensive linemen if I'm not mistaken now all right now we'll just take three right tackles to kind of balance out the team and then we're gonna 
Then we're gonna start figuring out this team. Are now on the clock. Boy, is it gonna be interesting. The Cardinals are now on the clock. <sighs> I am thoroughly excited to see how this ends up turning out. Or right, Zach Banner. Oh. He's he's a pretty good player, and with the fifty fourth pick, because I, I don't understand, I understand why they have the fifty fourth pick. I mean, it's it's really a waste of a player. Cause I didn't, I usually just end up taking Colby Wadman. It approved. I'm not lying to you guys. And oh, he's gonna use the punter, and he'll f somehow make him into an amazing Start player. By installing your game plan. No. I will go in here myself. Go to the punter. I'm gonna show you all. I am this releasing him. Card. Here you can see your player's strengths and there, see? There's proof. Alright, so looking at the team now, I'm pretty sure we were 51 overall. Yeah, 51 overall with a 95 overall on offense. But if we go into our lineup, obviously you'll see uh there's a, a significant lack of Well, non-offensive linemen. So, I'm going to go off offline, go through and edit all these players, and I'll let you guys, and I will essentially show you guys the finish, the final team in just a second. Alright guys, so after I went through and edited everything, the team has actually ended up being a 38 overall, with a 58 overall offense and a 15 overall defense. And we'll go through the depth chart now, just kind of see, see how the entire team looks. As I said, Lynn Johnson in at QB. Brennan Scherf will be our starting running back. We also got Cameron Tom, Justin Murray, and James Hurst. Starting fullback will be Brandon Brooks. Wide receiver, we've got Nate Solder, David Kessenberry, Laurent Duvernay Tardif, Ali Marpet. And Cameron Irving. At tight end, we have Donald Penn, Jason Peters, and Ike Bodiger. Left tackle, I've moved Richie Incognito to left from left guard to left tackle. Left guard, we have Quinton Nelson. At center, Jason Kelsey. Right guard, Zach Martin. Right tackle, Brian Beluga. At left end, we got Justin School. We have Ryan Jensen at right end, Rodney Hudson, Matt Paradis, and Andres Pete at defensive tackles. Shantley at left outside linebacker. Middle linebacker, we got Wyatt Teller, David DeCastro, and Connor McGovern. At right outside linebacker, we have Tom Compton and David DeCastro. At corner, we have Donovan Smith, Andrew Norwell, Sua Opeta, Patrick Morris. Our free safety is Ben Garland. Strong safety is Nick Easton. Kicker is Ty Sam Braglio. Punter is Chuma Edoga. So that's just essentially what the team has ended up looking like. Look at give you a little bit better view of everything in the lineup section. Obviously, the team is very well round is very well rounded on the offensive line. Uh, tight ends are pr actually pretty decent. QB, running back, wide receiver is definitely lacking. And on the defensive side, it's pretty pretty consistently bad all around. And obviously, special teamers are not the greatest. So if you have enjoyed, well, I mean, if you're still here, you have enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Leave like the video, I guess, and just let me know you're somehow watching. You know, whether that be a comment or just like. And it is J Biebs signing off.